Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Datejust Turnograph 116264. This watch is available from Chronex.com for €10,390. You can purchase the watch from Chronex.com online or alternatively in person at their boutiques. All their watches are Chronex certified original by their in-house watchmakers and all their watches are covered by the Chronex 24 month warranty. So firstly, let's look at the warranty card and tag that comes for the watch, and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. So this is the warranty card that comes with the watch, and as you can see, the reference number of the Turnograph is 116264. This piece is from 2009, and one also gets the original Rolex price tag, as you can see, and on the reverse it has the barcode and the full reference number of the piece. So the watch also comes with the original Rolex watch box and also the Rolex outer box. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Rolex Datejust Turnograph reference 116264. So firstly I'll give you the background to the Turnograph. Rolex first produced the Turnograph in 1953 and that was the reference 6202. And this piece, the 116264, was produced from 2004 and then discontinued in 2011. So with regards to the dimensions, it's a 36mm case. We have a 44mm lug-to-lug -lug measurement, a thickness of 11.7mm and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the Oyster Lock clasp and as you can see the Oyster Lock clasp is signed with an embossed Rolex coronet. Absolutely flawless mirror polishing to the centre section of the Oyster Lock clasp which complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks and we have a brass satin finish to the Oyster Steel outer sections as you can see. So I'll show you the interior. Solid milled oyster steel as one would expect, flawless mirror polishing to the top side, underside and flanks and we have the Rolex brand emblem engraved to a very high standard on the steel and Knox interior. So with regards to the rest of the specification we have a flat sapphire crystal and we also have a cyclops magnifier which has AR coating on the underside. The negative of the flat sapphire crystal is there is no anti-reflective coating on the underside. Only the underside of the Cyclops magnifier has anti-reflective coating. One of my favourite aspects of this turnograph is the contrasting red Arabic numerals. And this is unusual for a Rolex because usually the date just has black Arabic numerals on a white date wheel. And I really like the contrast of the red Arabic numerals. It's something that, that I would like to see Rolex use on other pieces. The red Arabic numerals are clearly magnified by 25 times magnification and I like the red Arabic numerals which complement the contrasting red second hand and also the red turnograph text on the dial at 6 o'clock. The applied white gold coronet at 12 o'clock for the 12 o'clock index is very aesthetically pleasing and it also complements the 3D effect to the white gold applied indices which have an angular profile. So good symmetry to the dial, perfect legibility, and although it lacks anti-reflective coating, because the dial is matte black rather than glossy black, it is very legible. And I think that the white gold applied indices contrast very well with the matte black dial. And I really like the red turnograph text, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So an interesting feature of the turnograph is that unlike other Datejust models which feature a white gold fluted bezel like this. It also has engraved Arabic numerals and an engraved triangle at 12 o'clock. So turnograph bezels rotate bi-directionally as you can see both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now unlike a GMT Master 2 which also has a bi-directional rotating bezel the bezel is friction based it doesn't click so it doesn't have 120 clicks as per the Submariner date and it doesn't have clicks as per the GMT Master 2 although it is a bi-directional bezel like the GMT Master 2. So the original Turnograph from 1953, the 6202, also had a bi-directional rotating friction bezel with 60 minute marks and this is very true to the original design although the original bezel of the 6202 was embossed whereas this is a fluted bezel with engraved Arabic numerals which is more aesthetically pleasing. So I like the fluted white gold bezel, it's absolutely gorgeous to look at. Let's test the bezel action. 
absolutely silky smooth all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation, both clockwise and anti-clockwise. No lateral side to side play whatsoever, and as it's bi-directional, we don't need to check for back play. So there's no alignment issue either because obviously it's bi-directional, so one can fine-tune the position of the black engraved triangle to perfectly align with the embossed coronet at 12 o'clock. In terms of resistance, it's got a nice firm resistance, so it's not accidentally going to be knocked out of position if you brush against the fluted bezel. And it is practical because one can use the 60-minute bezel for timing purposes by setting the triangle to the contrasting uh, bat on hand. And really, I think that it's a very practical version of the date just as a daily wear piece. So the turner graph is interesting to look at, but the rotating 60-minute fluted bezel does actually serve a purpose as a practical piece. So with regards to the crown, it's solid oyster steel, coin edge finished and embossed with the Rolex coronet. It's a twin lock crown and therefore it provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance. So let's test the screw down crown action. Absolutely sublime. This is 10 out of 10 screw down crown execution. As you'll know from my previous reviews, I regard the Rolex twin lock and trip lock crowns respectively to be the best screw down crowns in the world. In the first position, it's the manual wind position, and one can manually wind the calibre 3135 to top it up to its maximum 48 hour power reserve. Absolute pleasure to feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. So in the first click position, it's the quick set date complication position, and rotating the crown clockwise will advance the quick set complication. Nice positive clicks. I like the indexing of the quick sets, as you can see. It indexes over to the next day with a nice positive clicking action. So it's an absolute pleasure to use the quick set complication. Pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position, and that hacks the movement. If you look at the contrasting red second hand, you can see that it is now stopped dead. One can hack the movement to set the time precisely to the second. And it's a characteristic of the calibre 3135. It's got a nice firm resistance to the gearing, no back play whatsoever, both clockwise and anti-clockwise. I like that firm resistance. It feels like a good solid movement. The calibre 3135 has been in use since 1988, so it is a reliable, well-proven Rolex calibre, one of the greatest Rolex calibres ever made. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement you can see the second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again so let's test screwing it back down immediate thread pickup this is incredible screw down crown execution the twin lock crown really is one of the best rolex screw down crowns ever made just absolutely silky smooth the interface between the solid oyster steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube are just perfection personified so with regards to the finishing to the head of the piece, flawless mirror polishing to the flanks and we also have flawless mirror polishing to the tops of the lugs. So it gives the Datejust Turner Graph a real dress watch aesthetic, although it's a practical daily wear piece. Because of the mirror polishing to the tops rather than brass satin finishing, it does give it a tool watch, a a dress watch aesthetic. Also the mirror polishing to the head of the piece complements the mirror polishing to the center links in the oyster bracelet. So it's just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing to the outer links and the mirror polishing to the center links is just incredible. It really is absolutely flawless. Mirror polishing to the flanks and also mirror polishing to the flanks to the oyster lock clasp. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you a wrist shot because this has been sized for a smaller wrist. But however, I'll show you the screw down oyster steel case back. The screw down case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters, as does the twin lock crown. The end links are a good tight fit to the case. Then we have a concentric brass satin finishing to the underside of the case. So it's a very well finished piece throughout. Nice positive click to the oyster lock clasp. Very satisfying to use. And I'll show you another feature of it. It doesn't have a glide lock mechanism, but it does have a 5mm easy link extension, as you can see. So one can get 5mm of on the fly adjustment by using the easy link extension. It deploys and also clicks back into the body of the clasp 
with a nice positive click which is very reassuring and there are also three micro adjustment dimples inside the body of the clasp so one can move the EasyLink extension in or out by five, three positions to get the perfect fit. So it's a very well executed clasp and I really like the positive click of it and also it's very aesthetically pleasing with the mirror polish centre section and the embossed coronet. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as this Turner graph is a 2009 piece, it predates the use of Rolex Chromalite on the baton hands and also the applied indices. It uses Superluminova. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. Beautiful green tone to the Superluminova. In terms of the green tone, it does look like the earlier tritium, which was used on earlier vintage Rolex pieces. Tritium was then succeeded by Luminova, which was also green, and then Luminova was succeeded by the green Superluminova that you're looking at here. Plenty of loom on the baton hands, despite them being very slim. And also we have loom dots on the white gold applied indices. So one can clearly read the time and also orientate the dial because there is an index absent at the 12 o'clock position due to the applied white gold Rolex coronet. So the legibility is good and one can clearly differentiate between the baton hour hand and the baton minute hand because the minute hand is significantly longer. The only thing I would like to see as an enhancement is a loom pip on the red second hand because I think that would further enhance the piece to be able to see the second hand sweeping around the dial but it's just incredible performance bearing in mind that this is a 2009 piece and it predates the use of chrome lights as I've discussed. This really is the same performance in terms of brightness and the length of time it's glowing for as chrome lights which is the contemporary standard for Rolex pieces. Right so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. This uses the Calibre 3135, which has been in use since 1988. The Calibre 3135 is a reliable, well-proven Rolex Calibre. It's technically excellent. The quality control, the build's quality and the materials are all outstanding, as is the accuracy. It's been used in several Rolex pieces, including the Sabarina Date, the Yachtmaster and the Sea Dweller, respectively. And of course, the Datejust, including this Datejust Turnograph. It has 31 joules and it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. It has hand winding and hacking which is useful complications and a 48 hour power reserve which is very good. The stated accuracy of the Calibre 3135 is plus 2 to minus 2 seconds per day. It's certified after casing by COSC as a superlative chronometer and also certified by Rolex. I'm pleased to report that this one is running consistently at zero seconds per day. Perfect accuracy. And bear in mind, this is a 2009 piece and it's still running consistently at zero seconds per day accuracy. That is just incredible. And it just demonstrates how good the Calibre 3135 is. It's a reliable, well-proven, accurate movement and there are no negatives to it whatsoever. One of my personal favorite Rolex calibers I've owned several Rolex pieces over the last 23 years with the Calibre 3135 and it's just one of the greatest Rolex calibers in terms of reliability and accuracy, zero seconds per day. So the perfect choice for the Datejust Turnograph and 48 hours makes it very practical for a daily wear piece which could potentially be worn as a dress piece due to the mirror polishing to the case and also the centre links in the bracelet as well as the fluted white gold bezel. So lastly I'll summarise the piece, what do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch will meet two criteria, it should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this is €10,390. Yes it is unquestionably excellent quality and yes it is unquestionably excellent value. This is the perfect daily wear piece. If you're a collector with a six to seven inch wrist, you will find the fit and the comfort level of this 116264 Turner graph to be sublime because it has a relatively short lug to lug measurement of 44 millimeters. And because it's only 11.7 millimeters, it's a relatively low profile piece that is easily going to slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. 
It's also an incredibly versatile piece because one can wear it as a daily wear piece and it also has the practicality of the bi-directional fluted white gold bezel with the 16 minutes indexing. But also, because of its shiny finish to the mirror polishing, to the center links and the case throughout, this could also be used as a dress piece. So it's a really good all-round piece, both a daily wear piece and also as a dress piece. It also has a twin lock crown, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters. So one could also use this watch as a sports piece. For example, one could swim with it because 100 meters is perfectly acceptable for a daily wear piece. So really, there are no negatives to this watch whatsoever. And it's a very good looking piece. The red Arabic numerals on the date wheel and the red contrasting second hand and the red turnograph on the dial add interest to the piece. Now, there is one other consideration. This had a relatively short production run from 2004 to 2011 when it was discontinued and it was the last turnograph made. After Rolex discontinued it in 2011, they haven't produced an updated version and it's now 2022. So really it's due for re-release. But because of the relatively short production run and the scarcity of the turnograph 116264 versus other versions of the 36 Datejust, this is going to be a highly collectible piece and sought after by purist Rolex collectors in the future. And therefore, I think it is a very strong investment piece with very good potential. So not only is it a good practical daily wear piece and a dress piece, but it's also a very strong investment piece. And now is the correct time to add it to one's collection as an investment. The other thing to bear in mind is the Turnograph has very good heritage and provenance behind it. It has the pure lineage of being produced since 1953. And it actually predated the first Submariner, which was produced in 1953 also. That was the 6204 and 6205. The first Turnograph 6202 predated the first Submariner by a few weeks. And it's a popular misconception that the Submariner was the first Rolex in 1953 to use a rotating bezel with 60 minute markings. Actually, the Turnograph came before the Submariner in 1953, only by a few weeks. So the original 6202 also had a 60 minute rotating bezel. And then this version, the 116264, has a very similar 60 minute rotating bezel, although it's fluted in white gold rather than being a relief bezel. So really it has that her heritage, that pedigree behind it, uh, the pure lineage from the very first turnograph in 1953, the 6202. And I really like it. It's one of the originals, uh, such as the Submariner from 1953. So the turnograph really is a purist Rolex collector's piece. So yes, it's excellent quality. Yes, it's excellent value. And I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Rolex Statejust Turnograph 116264. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.